So you've been asked to sketch the inverse of a function and you don't have the rule or the equation of a function, how are you supposed to do that? What's up y'all? I'm Tom and this is Like a Math Class and we're gonna answer that question right now. Let's get to it. To sketch the inverse of a function, we're trying to sketch the inverse of this function g of x right here. The first thing I like to do, uh, and you don't have to do this, so we'll kind of consider this an optional step, but the first thing I like to do is draw the line y equals x. And that looks something like this. Bink. And I do that because I like to, I know that my inverse function is going to be reflected across this. So drawing that line might be enough that you need to sketch that inverse. I'm going to go through a couple more steps though first. After that, I like to find points on my function. Now, this was nice enough where I actually had some already indicated on here. Your functions might not have these things already indicated. Maybe they do. Um, so if yours don't, you want to look to see where are they crossing uh, nice spots on your grid, right? That's what you're going to be looking for. But since I already have some indicated, I will just label them out here where I've got negative 1, 0. I've got uh, 0, 1. I've got 3, 2. And I have 8, 8. Three. Now anytime we've got inverses that we know the next thing we want to do is we want to swap our x and y values. So I'm just going to swap these things because all I'm trying to do is sketch this. So if I can get some key points laid out then I can draw my graph real nicely. So uh, I'm going to swap my, my x and y. So I'm going to have points of 0, negative 1. I'm going to have 1, 0. I'm going to have 2, 3. And I'm going to have 3, 8. So once I plot those, this is going to start becoming very clear how to sketch this thing. 1, 0, uh, 2, 3, and 3, 8. And now we're going to just connect the points for the inverse. So we're going to kind of come around up like this. We're going to go up, and there we go. So that looks roughly the same. Now what this should look like is this should look like a mirror across that line y equals x. And as we look at this graph here, this does indeed look like a mirror across that line y equals x. Now the thing that you always want to make sure that you do uh, that I did not do is I want to graph this out to the same domains that I have here. On your graphs, uh, if you're looking at a question from a textbook or on a test, you're going to want to graph the exact same domain uh, and range swap for your function and your inverse. So I did not go all the way out to my x value of 9, which would be my y value of 9, so I would want to continue this up to about right there. That's going to be a very important piece. That's often a spot where you might uh, lose one point uh, here or there, uh, especially on IB exams. So really when we're doing this, this always goes back to the same idea that inverses swap our x and y values, that inverse swap our domain and ranges, that they reflect across the y equals x line. And that's all that we need to remember anytime we're working with inverse functions. I hope that was helpful. If it was, make sure you give me a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video.